With the upcoming launch of the Planet Zoo Tropical Pack, Frontier has kindly provided me with a sneak peek at the new content. So to showcase all of the wonderful new scenery pieces and five new animals, I've created this tropical Indonesian inspired diorama. This is a showcase of all the wonderful new pieces and a look at the brand new animals we have too. So why a diorama and not full zoo? Not everyone is aware that with a diorama, it holds all the functionality of any other creative mode zoo. So you can add animals and all the resources of a standard zoo, but it simply takes away the background, so somewhat limits the space a bit. Personally, I find the diorama function is incredibly useful for showcasing small concepts, as you're not left with a lot of empty space to fill. It's also somewhat of a bigger challenge, as you have a limited amount of space to work with. Making bigger zoos, I struggle with the layout sometimes, and a lot of the time make spaces much bigger than they need to be, because the space is essentially unlimited. So making this diorama, I've made the space just big enough to squeeze in all five of the new animals and some of the themed facilities like the staff room and the veterinary clinic, stuff like that. So that's why I've gone with the diorama this time to showcase the tropical pack content. Anyway, enough rambling, let's take a look around. So to start with this diorama, what I did was I did expand the space out a little bit. When you start with the diorama, it's about 40 by 40 meters, I believe. So it is a square. What I've done is I just used the terrain stamp tool to expand this out a little bit because that's not quite enough room for all five of the new habitats that we needed. From that, I manipulated the terrain so that I wanted this to look like an Indonesian rainforest and that means it needed a lot of peaks. Way, way back when the Southeast Asia pack landed, I spent ages looking at the terrain of Southeast Asia and I spent ages making a map, a custom map at that point that had this sort of island feel to it. So really, really high cliffs that drop right down into the sea. So with that experience, it wasn't too tough actually making this terrain look like it should. That's both a case of, well, it was a couple of years ago when I worked on the Southeast Asia Zoo, so I've learned a lot since starting that zoo, what pieces work well to make the terrain. A big improvement on this one from my last attempt is using the faux rocks to make these big cliff sides. Unfortunately, that does mean if you want to look at this yourself, you're going to need to have the Aquatic Pack DLC as well as the Tropical Pack DLC for this to run. Aside from those two, I've been careful to only use base game pack stuff because I know not everyone owns every single DLC that's out there for Planet Zoo and I like to be as inclusive as possible with these creations. I did think about trying to create this without using the faux rocks that you get in the aquatic pack but to be honest it simply doesn't look right if you use the natural rocks. You really need some of the sharp edges on the, the faux rocks to get this looking the way it does. So yeah, in terms of terrain, there's some high cliffs at the back and this is where I've got the entrance as well. I've used the new in-game blueprint entrance for the entrance here. You'll find when I do showcases of brand new packs, where I can, I try and stick with the in-game blueprints that are provided with the new pack. I think Frontier do an excellent job when they're creating these blueprints and they do a really good job of showcasing what the new pieces are themselves. I don't want to take away from that by spending half a weekend making my own stuff that looks about the same as the quality of this one does. So where possible I've been using the in-game blueprints for everything that I've put in the zoo. From the entrance I've got a path that winds right down the cliffside and you'll notice with this there's a brand new path in the new pack. I think this is a great path for when you're making a tropical zoo. It's got the block paving with the very lush green grass growing in between the paving slabs. The railing for this is stone with a very decorative panel in the middle. And I've utilized this path in all over the zoo. I thought it fit in very well with the theme I was going for. The cliff on the other side of the back here, I decided I was going to try and go for a waterfall. Historically, I really veer away from waterfalls because I don't think I'm very good at building them. But for this zoo, I wanted to present sort of a waterfall that dropped down into this little river that would follow right the way through, cut across the zoo, up to the front of the diorama itself. 
I was a little apprehensive that I would end up looking a bit pants, but I think I did a decent enough job here. A nifty little feature here I put in, the path actually winds underneath the waterfall, so when you go through it, you've got water falling on both sides. Originally, I'd made this into a little cave in here, and I had the stalactites that you get in the, I think it's the twilight pack that they were introduced. And then I realised, oh wait, hang on, I was going to make this so that you don't have to have other DLC packs to open this, so I had to get rid of those, unfortunately. Still, even without the stalactites, I think it looks good enough as it is. For the river below this, I've used the features that you can turn off and on for water features so that it's on two different levels here. So the waterfall itself drops into this sort of initial pool and then we have another drop that goes into the river itself. So creating this whole diorama, that's where I started with the terrain. I feel that's important getting some leveled off ground where the habitats would sit. I then marked out a rough area where I thought the habitats could go themselves, made sure there was enough room for them. Thankfully, all five of the new animals in the tropical pack, they don't need a lot of room for their enclosures. It's not some crazy polar bear sized enclosure needed for any of the animals here. They're all within the 200 to 500 meters. So that made things a little easier. I guess that's a nice introduction to the fact that we should probably take a look at the habitat, shouldn't we? The first one we come to is a brand new walkthrough exhibit habitat for the brown-throated sloth. An interesting concept, this one. Up to now, for the walkthrough exhibit animals we've had, it's been the tiny flying animals like the Egyptian bats and the butterflies. Well, for this one, we've got a large mammal animal and personally, I think it's perfect. As far as I'm aware, sloths are incredibly slow animals and they will spend pretty much all of their time up in trees. They don't do a lot of moving around. Kind of like koala bears in that way. And I did notice with the koala bears in the game, they do an awful lot of movement that a koala bear naturally wouldn't do in real life. So to me, it makes sense to have the sloths in the game as an exhibit animal. They can be quite predictable with their movements so having them just sitting up here in the little ropes and stuff it makes perfect sense to me the design for this habitat i can't take any credit for this this is the frontier blueprint for this one and it's just perfect i couldn't top this if i tried we've got a lovely balance of tropical nature interwoven with this sort of ruined temple kind of feel to it the only thing I did in place in this was making sure it fit within the space I provided and that it didn't dominate the landscape too much. So for that, I've just dumped a loads of other tropical nature around it and it makes it feel like it is within the tropical jungle sort of feeling. So that's our sloth enclosure. Leading out of here, the path winds down a little more and this brings you out onto the Red River Hog enclosure. Now, I'm fully aware Red River Hog is an African animal, so uh, technically it doesn't really fit in with the Indonesian theme, but I've gone for an Indonesian zoo feel here, and I did want to get all the animals in that are brand new to this pack, so here we are. We've got an Indonesian themed Red River Hog habitat. For this, I've made a custom fence out of the new pieces, some lovely, very delicate themed pieces with this pack very useful for creating your own custom fencing. For the hard shelter here, I've repurposed one of the blueprints that was included with the pack, uh, taken out some of the details and added in the bedding there. Works very well. And one of the features with the Red River Hogs, they have the mud bath in part of their enrichment. So I've created a custom shelter here to go over the, the mud bath. I was careful to make sure this is still accessible, and they can get in there and have a lovely bathe in the bath. So just a custom design here using the new pieces. From here, let's go across to the waterfall again because the river below, this is where I'm keeping the Asian water monitor. A nice animal to build for this one. The monitors aren't very demanding at all. In fact, for the most part with this one, I'd already created the enclosure when I decorated the river put the monitors in and there was very little I had to change to accommodate the habitat they needed for this. The only problem I had with this one, because the river is at the lowest part of the terrain, I did have a little problem getting the habitat gate in here. 
rather than have the habitat gate start at the same level as the other habitats, I wanted it to be on the lower level uh, flush with the river. So I've basically tunneled underground and we've got, I won't show you it because it's absolutely awful looking, but I've tunneled under the ground and snaked right around the inside of the mountain with the path in there so that it's got access to the keeper hut and stuff up above to make use of both sides of the river as well in this habitat. Now, the keepers are actually pretty agile for crossing over rocks and stuff so they can get around the habitat, but they can't walk through water. <laughs> They're not going to swim to fill up a feeder. So I've got this nifty little bridge that goes over the river here um, on top of the rocks. And surprisingly, the keepers are very happy to walk across this to get to the other side and fill up the feeders I've got over here. In terms of guest viewing for this habitat, I've built a little overhanging recreation area above this. This is one of the few buildings I've actually custom made for this build, so it's not a blueprint that I've stolen from the Frontier blueprints for this one. This is one I made all on my own. Depending where the monitors decide to hang out, guests are either going to get a really great view here or not a great view at all. Normally a good trick for this, if you've got an enclosure where there are inaccessible viewing areas, then make sure you've got all the enrichment items up front where guests can see them and the animals tend to hang out there most often. With the water monitors here, they have got a little mind of their own and they do like to go wandering and sampling all the little pools and stuff in the river. So they're not always as well behaved as I thought they'd be and they'll be in an area where the guests can't see them. Hey ho, kind of like you get in real zoos anyway, I guess. So that's the water monitors. Let's move up and take a look at the final two animals. So at the back here, we've got the Fusa, not the Fossa as I originally thought it would be. Some of these animal names are a bit tricky in how you pronounce them. And this was certainly one that I was scratching my head over for a little while. Anyway, Fusa is another African animal. It is um, from Madagascar. It is really interesting actually that you get a lot of strange looking animals from Madagascar because it's an island and the way evolution works, a lot of Madagascan species are very unique because there was no natural predators. There was no natural way for other animals to cross and get there. So they were essentially left to their own devices to evolve in their own special way, I guess. In Madagascar and the Fusa I would definitely count in that regard because I mean look at it it's a bit weird isn't it my favorite kind of animals are the weird ones I've got to say I mean it's like the body of a cat and the head of I don't know a rat or something well actually the Fusa is um I think its closest relative is the mongoose which kind of makes sense now when you look at it anyway to build this habitat I've taking influence from some of my previous builds that I've done for animals like the Binturong. So it's fulfilling the climbing needs. There's a lot of vegetation in here. Again, because it's an African animal, I still went with the Indonesian theme to make it fit in. If I was to do this in another build, I'd probably go more with an African concept. But we're trying to make this all fit in with Indonesian rainforest in this build. So this is what we've got. Another custom fence here using the brand new pieces. And there's a custom hard shelter, similar to what I did for the Red River Hogs and their little mud bath over there. Anyway, this brings us to our final enclosure within this build, and that is for the Lar Gibbon. This is, without a doubt, probably my favourite animal in the tropical pack. It's got so much interaction. It's the second brachiating animal added to the game after the Siamang, so very unique climbing abilities here. To showcase that, I've set up this habitat with plenty of climbing frames and the vines here that they will climb across in their very unique fashion. Fascinating stuff, watching them interact with all of these climbable pieces. About my only issue with this is the fact that they refuse to climb the trees. If you add trees to the environment here and then you check the uh, climbable areas, the gibbons don't climb any of the trees. And I was hoping that they'd climb up and swing across the branches a little bit like they would do in real life. Alas, they don't do that. So I've added some additional climbing frames around the trees and stuff to make them interact with that a little better. But the hard shelter here, again, this is a, another blueprint that I've stolen from the new pack and adapted it to make it into a hard shelter. So we've got the sleeping quarters underneath. 
And on top of here, this is the feeding station for the gibbons. Now, the keepers will go up here and um, put food in it because there's a stairway at the side that's accessible for them. I've also changed out some of the railings around this building because the original railings on this is not climbable. So I've replaced this with some wooden poles that the gibbons will climb up and stuff, make it a bit more interactive up there. A nice little feature in this build, when I made the crazy tunnel walkway for accessing all of the facilities stuff, I forgot and didn't change the path out to be a staff path, so this is still a guest path. And I noticed once the guests started flowing through, they'll actually stand up here on the higher level path that's in the side of the mountain to look at the gibbons, and I thought, that's actually really nice. So it's a nice little secret area here that the, the guests are having to wind their way through all the mystery tunnels underneath the mountain. But once they do that, they get up to this nice little view up here. So I figured, hey, -ho, I'll just leave that in because it looks quite fun. Anyway, that's the habitat I've created for the new gibbons. And that is the whole zoo, really. We've got some facilities dotted around and definitely trying to keep in with this Indonesian rural village in the rainforest feel for everything. I'm kind of happy with how it turned out and I'm hoping this has given you an idea of what is actually possible with the new pieces. Some wonderful new build pieces included in this pack, including especially these brand new roof pieces. These are especially helpful because they're all not on a grid. All of the new roof pieces are free build mode, so much easier to work with than trying to figure out how to split groups and stuff when you're working with the roof pieces that are on a grid. I hope you've enjoyed the tour, and there will be a few other new videos popping up in the next few days where I'm going to rate all the five new animals, uh, rank them in order of the animals that I would place in my zoos and which ones maybe to avoid. And there's also going to be another video out with the new starter habitat series habitats. That's habitats that I create for the new animals. And it's just basically using base game build pieces so that you can get working on that right away. It's blueprints that you can place in your game without having to unlock the new theming first or anything like that. So thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.